Hello and welcome to This Is My Architecture from Sydney, Australia. I'm joined by Hani from Scale360. Welcome, Hani. Hi, Simon. Nice to be here. Thank you for having us. Pleasure. So what does Scale360 do? We're a fintech company. We build software for banks. Um, we've got clients around the globe. Fantastic. Now, we've got lots of boxes up here. Um, one of the key things that banks do is obviously core banking. Talk us through what you've done here. Sure, great. Well, we've got our core banking on the cloud. We've got um, auto scaling groups, which we're using for running the core banking mm -hmm. and the APIs that we've developed so that we could actually put this on the cloud. Um, and we use RDS. It's a SQL Server uh, system, so we're, we're running the core banking on that. And um, RDS is really great for allowing us to free ourselves from managing the actual core banking uh, infrastructure yes. and just focus on the processing of the transaction. For sure. So you've got an active passive here, you've got read replicas, you've got auto scaling groups there scaling, you've yeah. got ELB doing the balancing for the yeah. availability. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. So yeah. you can deploy that really nicely, but there's yeah. a really cool part to, I guess, modern banking, which is this real-time experience. Right, exactly. And it's really important when we're, because we're, we build for digital banks, so mm -hmm. primarily digital organizations are using us. And in order to be able to run this in, in the cloud, you also need to know what's happening all the time in real time. Mm -hmm. So we've actually connected this up through to a um, Kafka uh, a backbone for actually taking the real-time streams mm -hmm. and um, processing that through Spark. We're then able to feed to the command center, which is uh, the business command center, um, all that's happening in their systems. So they're able to see what transactions are going through, um, how many transactions, where where is the you know vol volume too high, too low, you know, dealing with um, any capacity problems immediately here. So we're looking in real time. Yeah, absolutely. So the way you've done this is you've got another VPC here with VPC peering between the two. Yes. And so the transactional data is happening, but it's also getting fed into the real time system. Yes. And we've shown things like, like Spark and the ELB that w operates here, but there's also a whole bunch of microservices to, to enrich this stuff. Right, exactly. Because in the traditional core banking, what you would have is actually a teller system, but we don't have tellers, you know. So what we're doing is we're putting the power in the hand of the consumer and they'll have um, their mobile app, and from here, for example, if you want to do a transaction, yeah. you're basically coming through the API gateway and straight back into the microservices. So once you're here, you're able to do things like funds transfers, inquiries, mm -hmm. you know, all the different things that you want to do, and you do them real time. So those are the interactions that are happening at the microservices layer, right. feeding back to the sort of systems of record, Ex exactly, but also being fed into this real-time business. Feed. Exactly. Yep. So all all the processing here is what makes it engaging and really feel good for the customer, mm -hmm. but all the processing here is where we keep the, the, you know, the real data and keep the accounts secure, which is also why we use the VPC peering. For sure, for sure. That, that lets you have security. But this, I think this real-time view is really interesting because from what you're saying in fintech now, we're moving from away from this, you know, wait till your money's in your account the next day, right, et cetera, right, to right. literally if I press the button on my mobile phone, right. the yeah, transactions right. happen. Transaction happens here and seconds later, literally seconds later, they're seeing it here. And so your business stakeholders as well, from an internal perspective, are looking for things like you know, fraud, risk, exposure, yes. etc. They're getting yes. that in real time as well. Absolutely. That, that's what, when, we, when we're analyzing here, because we're, we've got the power of Spark, we're able to detect you know, anomalies in behavior. This account hasn't been used for a while, so this is something to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. These things can be flagged up right at the account level, even though you're looking at a massive amount of data coming through in real time. Fantastic. And so you've used all the resilience components. You've got the ELB spreading load across auto-scaling groups, across yep. multiple availability zones. You've got redundant database. You've got completely scalable processing here, right. highly available API gateway. Right. The bank's 24-7 now, isn't it? it? Absolutely. Yeah. There's. I mean, you can't take time and run a batch process here and tell people you can't use the system. So yeah. everything has got to be real time. And at the same time, you need to be able to see what's going on. Sensational. What a great solution. What a great modern view of finance. Uh, thank you, Hani. Thank you. Thanks, Simon. Appreciate it. And thanks so much for watching. This is my architecture.